Bootstrap is a framework that helps you make responsive websites. Responsive means that when the size of the window or screen changes, the layout of the website still looks good. To incorporate Bootstrap into your application, there are two things we can do. We can either import the Bootstrap into our code or download a sample project. To start, we'll take a look at the code we've been working on in Sublime here and import the framework. To import Bootstrap, we can either download it and link it locally to our code or just link it from the internet. We'll link it from the internet for now and it's going to look a lot like how we linked our CSS here. So going to the Bootstrap website, we can just copy and paste this into our code here. And now we have Bootstrap. Super easy, right? Now if we save this and open up our index.html again, you'll notice our styling changed a bit here. That's because Bootstrap already has some CSS built in, which make this header and the paragraph and the italicizing look a bit different. But if we wanted, we could always overwrite whatever Bootstrap has in our own CSS. Now the thing that makes Bootstrap responsive is its 12 column grid. Bootstrap documentation can sometimes be confusing, and so I think this image will help. Basically, Bootstrap divides a web page into rows and columns. Each row is divided into 12 columns, you know, down here, one, two, da, 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 12 of them. And an element, say a paragraph, an image, a header, can take up any number of these columns. You can also have multiple elements in one row. An element could take up all 12, or just, you know, the three on the right columns, or whatever. Now, no matter the screen size, it's broken up into 12 columns. So I can specify how many columns I want for each element on a small, medium, large, extra large screen. I can also say that I just want it to take up, you know, six columns on a middle screen, and it will resize itself appropriately for the smaller and larger screens. This may be confusing, but don't worry. We are going to mess with it ourselves right now. Let's say I wanted two different headers on the same row, taking up an equal amount of space, and a button underneath the second header. Well, we'd have one row, and each header would take up six of the 12 columns. And so first we need our row, and so that would be a div class equals row, and then we'll close the div. This is our row. Row is a class in Bootstrap that is already written for us, so we don't even need to worry about it. And then we'll have div class, and we'll say col-md-6. And this is basically saying have a column that goes on a medium-sized screen, and it will be six columns in length. And so we will close this div, and then copy this, because we want two different columns, each six columns in length out of the 12, you know, columns that take up the whole screen. And then inside of these, we'll have our header twos. One will say, hi, there. The other will say, hello. Save this, refresh the page. Now we have, hi there, hello. Now, why does this look a little weird? Well, the div our first div, call md6, what this does is it takes from this like area of the web page all the way to the middle. So that's like six columns, it's half of the web page. The other one, which goes from six to 12, that's our hello one. And so if we add more content to this, we'll be able to see it more clearly. And so if I just you know type some stuff in here and then copy it over to our other header, save it up, go and refresh our page, you'll notice this stuff goes on to the next line. And when I shrink this page, now both of these are on separate lines. And so stretching that out again, it goes from two columns down, you know, two on top of each other. And that's what Bootstrap does. Now for adding our button, we'll just go to the button documentation here for Bootstrap and we'll scroll down. Here's the link we want. And this basically says create a button in Bootstrap. And so we'll paste this. Button is a HTML tag, and button and button primary are the things that are actually going to make our button look really good. So if we save this, refresh the page, there we go. Now we have this button primary, and notice it's actually under our second header. And when we stretch this out a bit, it stays under our second header, and it stays in this designated column, which is made up of the six columns that make up the entire 12 columns of the whole screen. Now I haven't shown you everything with Bootstrap, 
There are lots of classes like forms and jumbotrons already built into Bootstrap so you don't have to create everything from scratch. Google will definitely be your friend for this type of stuff. So that's it for this video. Next Friday, I'll show you how to use the developer tools in Google Chrome that make editing and creating web pages easier. See you then.